My next speaker is Matt Kennedy, and Matt's from Vancouver, BC. Now, I know Vancouver for mountain biking, which is an amazing place for that, but Vancouver is also known for sparklers, believe it or not. And Matt lives up there with his wife, Carissa, and they have three adorable little kids. And uh, he used to be a teacher and brings his love of teaching into teaching photographers, this very cool niche style of how to do the sparkler shot in weddings, which is a really great idea, you know, niche market, your, your things that you do the best at. So without further ado, come on up and tell us how it's done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I've got a sparkler, but I've been told I'm not allowed to light it, so don't worry. You're not going <laughs> to. I know, uh, I know. It's OK. We like Celeste still. Um, so why sparklers? I'm going to get right into it. <laughs> I'm going to get right into it. Um, you want to know how to do sparkler shots because if you're a wedding photographer, you're probably going to be asked to do them. So you need to know how to do them so you don't look, you know. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple, like three different ways to do them. Sparkler exits are the most popular right now, especially in the States. Um, you need to know how to do sparkler exits. The one thing I'm going to leave with you about that is just that you need to be in control. So you need to tell the guests what to do and the couple what to do. Short exposure, these sparkler shots are often done with groups, I find, um, and they're often done when it's a little bit too bright out to do long exposure shots. Brings me to long exposure shots. These are my bread and butter. These are what I love doing and my clients love passing. Um, so these long exposure shots are late at night uh, and they are where you get to be a little bit more creative. So that's what I'm going to spend the whole presentation talking about. First thing for long sparkler shots, location and light is really important. You need to go to a place that it is dark, and especially where no ambient light is on the subject. Putting some dark area behind them is probably the best bet if that's the situation. Next thing is composition. You need to be able to compose it so that the focus of the picture is still the couple, not the sparklers. The sparklers are adding to the picture. This is a picture of a couple. We want to still emphasize that. Um, now, this is like the nitty gritty. Okay, so focusing. It's late at night, it's dark. It's hard for your camera to focus. So take an iPhone or a camera, I don't have one on me right now. Did I just sponsor ourselves by Apple by saying that? Um, <laughs> take an iPhone, have, have them hold that facing your camera so you can focus on it, then just get them to put it in their pocket, leave your, leave your camera in manual focus after that and you won't have any problems. These are some settings that you can try, like Von Wong says, don't go off settings in total. You need to be able to troubleshoot your settings after you have a starting point, but that's a good start to, uh, place to start. Now, troubleshooting. So, a lot of times you'll get the background too bright or the background too dark and the sparklers too bright. You need to learn how to maneuver the balance between those things. Sparklers do not change their brightness. So think of these as off-camera flash, but a flash that you cannot change the position or the brightness of. Okay, so you need to be able to compensate for it. Your shutter speed is what's going to really affect the ambient light, so mainly the background, as well as any extra ambient light on the couple, which makes them blurry. ISO and aperture affects the sparkler brightness and your off-camera flash that you're adding. So when you're adding flash, notice on this picture that the flash is coming from behind him facing her face. That's very important. You, don't, you want to make the bride look the best, the guy, whatever. <laughs> okay, so now in a situation like this, the couple in this picture is actually pretty much the same brightness level as the background. So in the first shot that I did this, I just went in, did a heart, went out, and I couldn't even see the couple. So the second shot, I went in, did the heart, went out, came back in behind them and rim lit them with the back of the sparkler so that they could actually be seen, separate from the background. Now, writing backwards, I was going to bring a big poster and do this for you. Just as a, as a tip, get a Sharpie, get a white piece of paper and practice a few words writing backwards. When you flip that piece of paper over, you'll be able to see and visualize how you can actually write it backwards. It's very tough, but you need to practice. With writing backwards, Dotting and crossing your, dotting your I's, crossing your T's. It's very tough with a sparkler because it's continuous. All you need to do is block it and then keep going. With a T, stop, go, keep going. Again, it's tough. Using an assistant, the most important thing with this, I do almost all of my shots by myself. I do the whole thing by myself. Um, in this shot, I had my assistant run up and down the side with me. <laughs> it's important to just make sure you communicate the vision. This is their idea. Sometimes you got to go with whatever they want to do. This is a shot that they really wanted to do. So I went with it. As soon as we nailed it, I showed it to them. They were in love. Then we just moved on to the next shot that I wanted to do. <laughs> Wedding party. This is uh, something to just think about if you have the chance. 
Bring the wedding party out with you because they love doing it. Again, you're going to just build a lot of word of mouth marketing with these shots because they're going to love seeing it from the back of the camera if you nail it. Uh, if you can't do sparklers like in here, do light painting. Uh, use an iPhone. You, oh, sorry. You, use, <laughs> use something that's just going to be bright enough to be captured by the camera and you can still get some really cool shots with light painting. Uh, talk to Josh Newton. Uh, editing, this is just something to think about. These are done late at night, so when I do same day edits at weddings, I can't include these in my slideshow, but I can have this be the first image I post on Facebook. So get home, edit that photo, post it on Facebook, people are going to share it like crazy. Then this last thing, is I don't think I could even say anymore, <laughs> but come over to my website and I've got lots more resources for you and some free gifts. Um, but I think that's kind of it. <laughs>